Welcome back. Well, what do you do when it's way too cold and icy out still? Winter won't give up and I can't go out and shoot with you. So I'm going to cook. You guys like to see me cook, so I'm going to cook. And I'm going to cook up one of the best dishes that I know of. It's just a real comfort food for me and for a lot of people I know. It's American chop suey, sometimes called American goulash in some places in the country. It's kind of a peasant dish. Uh, it's a very simple dish to put together. It's not the sort of fare that you normally find in a cookbook. And years ago, believe it or not, there was no such thing as the internet. You couldn't go searching online to find recipes. And um, I had had American chop suey, you know, in the school cafeteria and things like that. And some of that stuff was okay, but uh, it, was, it was nothing more than glorified ketchup and hamburg with uh, macaroni. But um, I remember a very special day. It was Valentine's Day, February 14th. It was a long time ago. I won't tell you what year you can guess, but this is in the late 60s. And uh, it was a bright, sunny day, but it was cold. It was about 20 degrees. And um, I had just come out of the induction center at Boston Army Base. And this is located in South Boston, right alongside Boston Harbor. And it was a cold, icy breeze that was coming in over the, over the water. And um, I stood in my first mess line after my induction ceremony, you know, we had, we had uh, physical and all that stuff. And uh, so I went through the mess line and I, I remember the cook put out this glorious looking bowl. He, he slapped a big ladle full and then another ladle full of American chop suey into my bowl. And this is nothing like the stuff I had ever seen before. It was all filled with green peppers and onions and stuff. It just looked and smelled fantastic. And so I went and sat down at the picnic table, and uh, this is, you know, this is kind of a noisy place too, because Logan Airport is just on the other side of the channel, and you know, planes are coming in and taking off right over our head. And uh, it was, it was not normally the place where you'd want to sit outside and eat, but I was really enjoying this, along with all the other guys who were sitting at the picnic tables around me. I mean, we're, this was fantastic American chop suey. I'll never forget it. And it burned that taste sensation into my brain forever. And, um, you know, I, 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 I was sitting there, I remember distinctly hoping that someday I'd be able to find a, this same recipe because it was so good. Well, I spent a long time after I got out of the service and, and uh, you know, I, I like to cook, but I spent many, many years sitting down at the table saying uh, to my wife, and uh, this ain't it, this isn't it. You know, I kept trying different things and trying different things. And it just wouldn't come out the way that that special taste was. Well, it was April 25th of 1984. I mean, this is, it was so special that I wrote it down on the recipe that I finally hit, I hit it on the mark. And all those memories of having that Valentine's Day bowl of American chop suey came flooding back into my taste buds. And I said, this is the one. So I, 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 I printed it out and, um, I, I typed it up, didn't have a computer back then, so I typed it up and put it in, a, in our little uh, box. Well, anyway, that's the recipe that I'm gonna cook for you. I, it's very special. Now, you can find so many different American chop suey recipes. You can put different things in them, that whatever, whatever your heart's content. But I'm gonna show you the one that hit the mark for me, the one that went right over the top. And uh, I think you're gonna enjoy this. So step over here and let's do it. So this is all great stuff. I've got here some two pounds of ground beef. Now, you know, people like really lean ground beef and, and uh, different things. I kind of, I kind of like the 80% the, the uh, lean. It has good flavor. It still has some fat in it. And, you know, my wife is not too fond of having too much fat in it, so I'm gonna drain it off. But with some uh, gr green bell peppers, a big fat onion, We've got uh, plenty of garlic here. This, is, this represents almost one entire uh, bulb of garlic, fresh garlic that I pressed. I got some red pepper flakes, oregano, sweet basil, bay leaves, Worcestershire sauce, important. Some olive oil, Hunt's crushed peppers, any brand would do, but the crushed peppers, uh, those, those are very good. And uh, elbow macaroni. Most of the time I buy the Berea, but uh, wasn't available this week. So any good elbow macaroni. So we'll start 
dicing things up and getting it going. So let's chop up this onion. We don't have to chop up, you don't want to chop it up too, uh, too fine. There goes our clock. Big old grandfather's clock that I got <clears throat> at an auction a few years ago. It's uh, valued at several thousand dollars in we picked it up for about a hundred and ten dollars at the auction. What a find. Sometimes you get sometimes you get very lucky like that. Okay. Got that onion chopped up. Now you can do this all in one pot. I could, I could put this right in with the Hamburg, but as I say, uh, my wife prefers that uh, I drain the, I drain the uh, ground beef, and I don't blame her. It's uh, a little bit too, a little bit too much fat. In goes the ground beef. Two pounds of nice this is ground chuck, I think. I like a good flavorful ground beef that's uh, got some fat in it. Even though, even though it's drained out, it still had that flavor. Let's get that nicely browned up. Put a lid on that, that'll help bring up the temperature in the pot, speed it up a little bit. Now I changed this uh, large fry pan when we got it. It had that rough texture bottom and uh, it works okay, but uh, I prefer to have a nice glossy finish on the bottom, so I sanded it down and uh, re-seasoned it with flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil is the uh, edible equivalent of uh, it's the same seed as linseed oil, which is used for uh, military gun stocks and for painting. But uh, that beef is just about done. Give it another. 20 or 30 seconds and we'll be ready to go. There we are. That looks good. In fact, it's also you can see some water boiling off too. Natural moisture in the beef. So you pay for that. That's all part of the uh, that's all part of the cost of beef is the the water that boils off and the 
fat that you drain off. So let's take care of that. Now, into that beef, we put our peppers and onions, get every last one there, and uh, I like to put the garlic in a little bit later on so that it doesn't get bitter. So we'll bring that up to a uh, medium-high heat. Put that lid on. That'll help keep the steam in. Speed things up a little bit. See how we're doing here. Oh yeah. So we've got nice translucent uh, onions going on there right now. That's the time to put in uh, the garlic. I've got a lot of garlic here. That's, that's important for this recipe. Now if I were doing this without draining the beef with a leaner beef, I'd do this along with the beef, but I'm going to put in about three tablespoons of olive oil. I get extra virgin olive oil here. That's always very important for flavor. And to that we'll add our salt, about three, three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, salt, pepper, pinch of pinch of uh, pepper flakes, about a quarter of a teaspoon or so, two bay leaves, oregano, you want about uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of oregano, you don't want to have too much oregano because then it starts tasting like uh, spaghetti sauce, that's not the goal here, and uh, plenty of sweet basil, sweet basil I put in uh, good full tablespoon of sweet basil right there and that should be all we need for uh, herbs half a teaspoon of uh, half a teaspoon or so of uh, put in a little bit more we'll put in a full teaspoon of Worcestershire Stir it up. Oh, the flavors. You can just, get coming right to my taste buds from my nose. Oh. And finally, we put in our crushed tomatoes. Now at this point you can add you can add a, about a cup of water if you want or a chicken stock. I've got some beef consomme here. I'll add that in just a half a can. That'll give it some richness and extra moisture. So that's your American chop suey recipe right there. Now we're just going to cook up a pot of pasta. Elbow macaroni. And turn that down to a low simmer. Well, what do you think, Benny? We're getting there. We've got a pot of boiling water, into which I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of uh, extra virgin olive oil. 
Now I've got some blessed salt here. A little bit of sacramental salt is always good in the cooking. Put in a good tablespoon. Box of uh, elbows. I'm doing a half a box. It's about a cup and three quarters. We'll cook that until it's done al dente. You want it nice and firm to the tooth. That's it. Take that off. Okay, back to the pot with that pasta. And then, okay. oh, this looks so good. Add generous couple of scoops. Lots of beef. Look at that. Tiny bit more. Oh, that's the smell that brings me back many years ago. That day of my military induction, Valentine's Day. So let's bowl some of this up and check it out. Now my, my army cook that day was a lot more generous than that. I had probably five times that. But uh, let's see how this tastes. So a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. You can use any kind of cheese if you want. Some people like American cheese on it. This is not the goulash that you find with uh, some recipes, which is more of a casserole. And uh, red pepper flakes. You know me. I just got to have. I just got to have some nice spice to it. So let's see, just how this is. Oh, this I. I have an involuntary smile as soon as I see this stuff. It's just fantastic. So. Hmm. I'll tell you what. This is it. This is every bit that memory that I have from Valentine's Day many, many moons ago. And, uh, I wanted to share this recipe with you because it was very special to me and all the guys I was sitting there with that day, they all thought it was the best day I'd ever had. So, give it a try. My gift to you and the gifts to me from my Patreon donors has been fantastic. I, I really appreciate your assistance and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right now and the bell. You'll know when I'm coming around with something. And I really hope we can get out and do some shooting soon. This winter just doesn't want to quit on us. So thanks for watching. Benny says thanks. And he's, he's lying here look, looking at me. I think he'd like to have some of this too, but this is just not Benny food. God bless.